All travel restrictions for Jamaica have been removed starting from the 15th of April 2022. This means no quarantine, no curfews, and you don't even need to present a COVID test for Jamaica anymore, regardless whether you're vaccinated or not. Vaccination certificate isn't needed either, wearing masks is still recommended on voluntary basis, but no longer required. For two years, we've been waiting for all these restrictions to be lifted. Now you can escape to Jamaica. And with this episode, I'd like to share best trip itinerary for Jamaica so that you can make the most of your trip. There are several towns in Jamaica where most tourist accommodation is to be found. Each of these towns has its own vibes and access to certain attractions, but not the others. You see, often people have this misconception that Jamaica is a small island and everything is nearby. This is not the case. I've been working with tourists in Jamaica for over seven years, and I cannot tell you how many times there were situations when people just don't realize the distance and the time it takes to do things. I get questions like, oh, I'm staying in Negril. Could you arrange a transfer for us from Kingston Airport? Sure, but it's five hours drive one way. That's why you need to keep in mind if you have decided to book accommodation in Negril, that's in the west, you won't be able to visit famous Downs River Falls further in the east. It is technically possible, but it's just not worth it because you would spend more time on the road than the excursion itself. So when planning a trip to Jamaica, it is important to choose the right town for your stay and only then focus on accommodation itself. There are three most popular tourism hubs in Jamaica. The biggest one is Montego Bay, the second is Ocho Rios, and then there is Negril in the west. There are also two towns that can be viewed as off-the-beaten-path tourism centers. They are Treasure Beach in South Coast and Port Antonio in Far East. Mandeville is not usually advertised for tourism, but often popular with Jamaican expats. And I'll make a separate video about it. And of course, there is the capital Kingston and Blue Mountains. There are two main airports in Jamaica. The biggest one is Montego Bay Airport with most arrivals. Flights to Kingston Airport should be chosen only if you're staying in Kingston itself, adjacent parishes, Mandeville and Port Antonio. For everything else, Montego Bay Airport is more convenient. The other thing you need to know when planning a trip to Jamaica is that attractions are spread out across the island. And no matter where you're staying, there might be one attraction nearby, but for everything else, you will need a vehicle. Because of this, it doesn't usually make sense to book a tour to just one attraction. Let's say you're staying in Montego Bay and wish to visit Bob Marley's home at Nine Mile. It's two hours drive. So there and back will make you spend four hours on the road for the purpose of only half an hour excursion. Not really worth it. That's why a lot of tour companies in Jamaica offer combo tours. As an example, in this case, to nine mile trip, they can add Downs River Falls and Green Grotta Caves. So you can have more time to enjoy excursions compared to the time spent on the road. Such day trips or combo tours with multiple attractions or activities is one of the best ways to explore the island. Negril is a town to chill and relax. At the same time, it's a place for beach parties. Negril is perfect for you if your main goal is to enjoy the beach or for a romantic getaway. Do not choose Negril if your goal is to explore the island as much as possible. In this case, it's better to visit Negril on a day trip from Montego Bay, for example, or from South Coast, rather than book accommodation in Negril as such. The most famous attractions located in Negril are Seven Mile Beach with free access through Margaritaville and other beach bars, and the world-famous Reeks Cafe, which is a bar on the cliffs known for cliff jumping and beautiful sunsets. My recommendation for off the beaten path places would be Half Moon Beach and Kalikajak Pirate Bar in the north, and Negril Blue Hole Mineral Spring in the south. If you choose to stay in Negril, you have an access to a few combo tours. You can do a day trip to Montego Bay in Falmouth, 
another one to south coast and trips to rainforest and hills in the center here. I will be making a separate episode focusing on attractions in Negril and the town itself. And of course, we will need more detailed episodes for other towns. So if you don't want to miss any of these upcoming videos, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notification. Now let's move to a short overview of the capital of tourism of Jamaica, Montego Bay. The best thing about Montego Bay is its location. Choose Montego Bay if you wish to explore Jamaica and have an access to the widest range of experiences. Everything from popular activities to historical tours. Unlike Negril, Montego Bay is not really focused that much on the beach life. Yes, there is a famous attraction in Montego Bay called Doctor's Cave Beach. It's right in the center and it's awesome. But honestly, it's the only one that can compete with Negril's beaches. All other beaches around Montego Bay are rather shallow because of the reef. The other famous attraction in Montego Bay is Rose Hall Great House. The honorable mentions are Rastafari Indigenous Village and the newly opened Harmony Beach Park. The downside of staying in Montego Bay is that the center is rather touristy, especially the so-called hip strip. And ironically, a lot of tourists don't like touristy places. But as I said, Montego Bay is one of the best places to explore the island. So here are the options you get while staying there. A day trip to the west of Montego Bay to include such places as Rockland's Bird Sanctuary or the Great River Bamboo Rafting, Day trip to the east of Montego Bay to visit historical Falmouth, Greenwood Great House, Marta Brea River Rafting, and this is also where Luminous Lagoon Night Tour is. Then, of course, while staying in Montego Bay, you can do a day trip to Negril, another one to Ocho Rios, and another one to South Coast. Ocho Rios is one of the best places to explore rainforest and waterfalls. Yes, there are a couple of good beaches and there are historical places nearby like the Spanish Bridge, but Ocho Rios is all about lush rainforests, waterfalls and rivers. You can even feel that when entering this town on a highway. Ocho Rios is perfect for those who love nature and for guests who want more activities focused around adventures. But you don't really need to be fit for these adventures. They are accessible more or less for everyone. The downside of choosing your accommodation in Ocho Rios is that on cruise ship days it gets packed and turns into a completely different town. The most famous tourist attractions in Ocho Rios are Downs River Falls and Mystic Mountain. However, my personal recommendation here would also be Irie Blue Hall, which is a set of many waterfalls up in the hills, and Calby's Place. It's a private garden with the river. I have videos on my channel covering both of these places, please check them out. Ocho Rios is a great location to do a few day trips. A full day tour to Montego Bay, another one to Port Antonio, day trip to Kingston and the excursion to Blue Mountains. A shorter trip can be taken to the east of Ocho Rios to see Bob Marley's home, Green Grotto Caves and Seville Heritage Park. Port Antonio is the capital of Portland, and in my opinion, Portland is the most beautiful parish in Jamaica. It has this unique combination of gorgeous lagoons with beaches, rainforests, and mountains. The whole island of Jamaica is picturesque no matter where you look, but even among this paradise-looking landscape, Portland is the winner. Again, just in my opinion. Here are famous attractions. Frenchman's Cove, which is one of the most beautiful beaches not only in Jamaica, but in the Caribbean. And Blue Lagoon, which was featured in a few Hollywood movies. The places I'd also recommend there would be Reach Falls, which are just stunning with a cave behind the waterfalls and then a waterfall inside the cave. And Boston Jerk Center, which is believed to be the place where jerk cooking style originated in Jamaica. But I think Port Antonio is also a perfect place for people who are adventurers, the true travelers, backpackers. If you're fit enough, you can hike to some mind-blowing waterfalls that most people don't even realize exist in Jamaica. And of course, it's home for the northern part of Blue Mountains. 
Portland, with its capital, Port Antonio, is the kind of Jamaica you'd never get to see in Montego Bay or Negril. Ocho Rios, with its rainforests and waterfalls, gives a glimpse of this adventure, but Portland is more wild and offers adventure at a greater scale. The main downside of staying in Port Antonio is it's far. It's relatively far from the airports and it's too far from even Montego Bay attractions, never mind Negril and South Coast. However, the things you can explore include the following. Blue Mountains, definitely. Coffee plantations, some good hikes and so on. Day trip to St. Mary Parish, which is a rather underrated parish in Jamaica for tourism potential. A few things to see there include the waterfalls and Port Maria Town with this gorgeous church. The other options, day trip to Ocherios and a day trip to Kingston. Portland is also the place where Chucky lives, who is famous from Backpack and Simon YouTube channel. I've seen many tourists are afraid of visiting the capital of Jamaica, Kingston, even for a day trip, never mind booking the whole vacation in Kingston. The reason is, of course, many years of bad reputation given to Kingston in the media, but for the most part, it's heavily out of date. Kingston is a big modern city, and just like any big city, it has its goods and its bads. If you get a chance to visit Kingston, definitely use this opportunity. There is a lot to say about Kingston and there will be a separate video covering the city. But for the purpose of this episode, the most famous attractions in Kingston are the Bob Marley Museum. And it is indeed an incredible interactive experience. If you are a fan of Bob Marley, then this museum is a must, as well as the home of Bob Marley at Nine Mile. These are two different attractions, so don't confuse the two. The other famous place is Devon House that was built by George Stebel, Jamaica's first black millionaire. The tour and the park, simply amazing. Other important places to mention are Emancipation Park in the center of New Kingston and Port Royal with its historical excursion of Fort Charles. Kingston in general is the place to choose if your main focus is culture and history. And at the same time, Kingston is a perfect place for those who love parties, nightlife and music, whether it's reggae or dancehall. Another great thing about Kingston is the variety of day trips you can run from there, including the most epic one of them all, the hike to Blue Mountain Peak. For that, you have to start in Kingston. Another amazing camping and hiking site is Hollywell Park, which also offers tours to coffee plantations. And for the adventurous ones, to explore the rural life in St. Thomas, including the surfing site, numerous waterfalls and mineral baths. St. Thomas is also the place where famous Ross Kitchen videos are created, starring Ross Moko. You see, when we're talking about Kingston, the city itself has a lot to offer, but it is also the location of Kingston that opens up a completely different story of Jamaica that is inaccessible to those staying in Montego Bay, Negrillo or Chirias. The experience in Kingston gives you another, a different side of Jamaica. I've decided to leave Treasure Beach and south coast of Jamaica to the end because this is the area where I would personally choose to live. And you have to be careful if you go there on vacation because you might start making plans to relocate there for good as well especially if you spend more time outside of your resort to experience local life. You see, nature in South Coast looks nothing like the rest of Jamaica. It really stands out. It's like visiting a different country. This is because this area is rather dry, so it gives a very different feel when you're there. But at the same time, it's still Jamaica. It still has the culture and awesome people, but it doesn't have this touristy feel that is present in many other towns. So Treasure Beach is the place for atmosphere. It feels cozy and calm. That's why people often choose South Coast for yoga retreats, meditation, spiritual healing, even though South Coast is actually famous for completely different things. One is Pelican Bar, which is a bar in the middle of nowhere with absolutely amazing story. And then there is Black River Town with its historical importance and Black River Safari to see crocodiles in the wild. 
If you take a little drive inland from the coastline, you will find another two famous attractions. These would be Wyas Falls, the biggest waterfalls in Jamaica with beautiful, beautiful park. And then, of course, the Appleton Estate, the operating rum factory with interactive rum tour. I will be making a separate video focusing on South Coast, but until then, you can check out my videos about some of the mentioned attractions and Jake's Hotel, which gives a little bit more insight of how it feels to be in Treasure Beach. While staying there, you can also do a day trip to Negril or another one to Montego Bay, but Kingston, Ocherias and Port Antonio would be too far for you to visit. So, to wrap it up, Negril, relaxation. Main focus, beaches, beach parties and chilling. Ocho Rios, main focus, adventures and fun, rainforests, waterfalls and rivers. Also a strategic location to explore central and eastern part of Jamaica. Montego Bay, balance of little bit of everything with main focus on culture and history. And it is also a strategic location to explore central and western part of Jamaica. Kingston, main focus, city life, history and culture, especially music. It is also the base for you to escape to Blue Mountains. Port Antonio, off the beaten path, best beaches and best rainforest, focused on local culture and paradise-like nature, humid and lush green. Treasure Beach and South Coast, off the beaten path as well, but dry, full of red-yellow colors, unique atmosphere and best place to get away from it all. Now, this video doesn't even cover every parish, never mind every town, and it doesn't even talk about the places in between towns. But I still hope that this video is going to be useful for those planning a trip to Jamaica and give you a general idea. And the last thing to talk about here is the length of your trip. If you're coming to Jamaica for one week or less, it's best to book accommodation in just one place. Then explore the local area and book day trips from there. If you're coming to Jamaica for eight days or more, you can still stay in one place. Or you might consider booking accommodation in different parts of Jamaica. This is something I don't often see advertised anywhere, but I would personally recommend it because it would make your experience much fuller. An example, let's say you're coming for two weeks. You can book seven days in Montego Bay, explore there and do a day trip to South Coast and another one to Negril. Then take a day trip to Ocho Rios and simply stay there for another seven days, exploring the town and taking day trips to Port Antonio, Blue Mountains and Kingston. If you want to see it all and experience the whole Jamaica, then you'll need at least one month of non-stop travel around the island or plan for visits in any order. Just an example, vacation one with a stay in Montego Bay, another one with accommodation in Port Antonio, trip number three can be with a base in Kingston and trip number four in Treasure Beach in South Coast. Jamaica has a lot of things to do and see, but don't forget that sometimes doing nothing is also doing something. So what do you think? Which location would be a perfect one for you and why? Please share in the comment section down below. In case you're staying in Montego Bay, I know some awesome tour guides and drivers who have a tours board license and would be happy to take you on different tours and day trips. We've created a website called irelap.com, so for more details, please check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my work on YouTube, please do consider supporting this project on Patreon from only five US dollars per month. And the special thanks are always to our top tier patrons for their continued support. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.